PowerTech 71008 single phase on off switch says so right on the label right, I'm going to show you how to mount this how to wire it a couple different mounting options coming up I'm Roger and welcome to the shop. What I'm going to cover here is wiring the PowerTech 71008 on off switch as they call it. 120 volt. It can also be used on a uh, single phase 240 volt circuit. Which would be a little bit different method but we're going to cover the 120 volt method here. Some mounting options. It comes with uh, little nuts and bolts on here. Screws in the front. However, the way I'm going to show you to mount this, if you're going to try to put it into a regular electrical box, the screws that come with it won't work. They're metric and they're oversized and they're larger than the standard 632. We're going to cover that here in a minute. Uh, you'll definitely want to put it into a box. I suggest you use a uh, four square box, two and an eighth deep. You could use a single gang box, but make sure it is at least two and a half inches deep because as you can see, this has to go in there if you get an inch and a half deep box, there's no place for the wires to go in the back. You'll be trying to cram it in there, so don't try that. Now, for the front of it, yeah, you could take a uh, regular cover and you could cut out an opening, or you could get a plaster ring, that's what these are called, and they're, you can get them raised to different depths. This happens to be a uh, 5 8 raised ring, uh, actually designed to be, go on a wall and then they sheetrock around it, and then you put your device in afterwards. An even better solution for this, if it's going to be on a surface mounted box, you can also buy them flat like this, and they're not raised. And that's what we're going to be mounting this into. So I'll get the camera turned around here, and we'll uh, give you a little bit of a close-up. And you also do not want to exceed the horsepower of the rating of the switch. If you are going to exceed, for example, 2 horsepower, and 35 amps at 120 volts and you shouldn't be doing that anyway at 35 amps I wouldn't take this past 20 uh, 2 horsepower motor at 120 volt and a 3 horsepower motor at 240 volt 20 amps they also gave you some ratings here for 3 phase but you don't have enough terminals for that so I don't know why they give you the ratings there for it but we're going to get the camera close up show you what I'm talking about okay you got everything laying here in front of me so the first thing you'll find is uh, little nuts and bolts there and I just take those off and don't use them in this particular situation I'll be using some little 632 machine screws if you are using this to nut and bolt it to something you'll probably find that the bolts are not long enough to do much with so you need something longer anyway I am have heard that PowerTech has now changed these screws to 632 to match standard outlet boxes. Okay, the first thing you'll find is that the cover comes off and you have a red button and you have a black button on and off. So obviously when you go to put this back on, you look at the back, the slot in the back, this will go right back on there, start and stop. So we're going to get to the next part. That is, where do the wires go? If you look very closely at the back, it is marked line and load. So that means your wires line side will come in over here where it says line, that's the end you plug in. And load, whatever is going to your tool or piece of equipment, will be over here on load. Uh, once again, this is just a, for demonstration, so I'm not going to actually hook this up to a machine. I'm just going to show you how to hook it up. So you have these little terminals here either use a Phillips, well I guess they are not really combination, they're Phillips. So you have two different options here. One is, and obviously you would not hook your green there, but this is just to kind of show. Pretend this is black, because I don't have another piece of spare wire laying here. You would put this underneath this little tab that raises up when you loosen the screw. and tighten the screw down. And that clamps it in there pretty good. 
me being an electrician and being around machines and vibration and everything for so many years, I do things just a little bit different. You'll notice here on the ends of my wires, and once again, this is just for demonstration, so this is a scrap. You'll see crimp on rings, and I use ring terminals, and the reason being, if something starts vibrating and comes loose, this won't fall out. So there's absolutely no way, especially on the hot side, you wouldn't want that falling out and are grounding against something. And if you are using these, make sure you use the proper tool to crimp them. You know, either standard type crimpers like this, or if you happen to have some of the better ratcheting ones, like this. Don't just take a pair of pliers and smash down on them, because that's not the way to do it. So what I would do then, is I would remove this screw completely. And I'm messing with the load side right here. And you want to keep your colors consistent. So I would put that screw back through the... I'll find some balances. So put that screw back through the ring. And put it back in its home. Get it started there. Which one is white and which one is not is black is just not going to matter. So long as you do the same thing on both sides. Yeah, then you can drop the screw. This here is the line side. Of course we have the white wire here so we want to match it up with the white. It's on the other side. Okay, so when you're done, it'll look like this. White to white, black to black. Line side, load side. So from there, you put this into your ring. Of course, make sure you connect your ground wires together. And you got to line everything up. Of course, one side will be red. You want to get that lined up with your stop button. The 632 screw. Take your 632 screw and get it started in the hole. Same thing on the bottom. And it'll look like this when you're done. Then it's just a matter of putting it into your box. Of course your cables or your wires would already be routed through the box for appropriate connectors. Make sure you connect your ground wires together and bond them to the box. I'm just going to kind of stuff these in here for right now for this demonstration. Put that on there, tighten the screws down, and you have a start, stop, just like that. 
So for the 71008 PowerTech on off switch, there it is. Nice way to mount it, simple. All you'll need to do is get yourself a couple 632 machine screws to uh, put in place of the metric screws that come with it. And just so I'll also mention, this here is a, uh, basically does the same thing, but it's paddle switch. And I did do a uh, video on this a while back on how to wire it. It's, uh, the method is pretty much at the same. The only difference between this switch and this switch is this one has a paddle on it, so you can like hit it with your knee or just bump it with your hand. But if you look underneath, it's exactly the same switch. So everything works the same, wires the same. This one here I happen to have mounted to a raised ring for a project I'm doing. This is also the same switch as I have on my table saw and router table here. And also on my uh, Dremel table, it always sits back over yonder there. So if you got a little bit of something out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. Next to that subscribe button is a little bell. You hit that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. Roger, in the shop. Power Tech Switches. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.